really spectacular to hear an 80 voice chorus. You know, this is a really wonderful opportunity to use the full resource of the chorus. But then the Cirque performers have a variety of acts that they do. You'll see the aerial hoops that are done either with one or two people. You'll see silks, which are, you know, long pieces of fabric that come in that have um, incredible feats of acrobatics on them. Um, you'll see something called a seer wheel, C-Y-R, um, which at one point this guy comes out, it's kind of like a Michelangelo sort of device and rolls around in that. We have something called hand to hand, which is another beautiful Cirque combination where two gymnast contortionists will develop these wonderful formations. Unbelievable actually how they're sometimes standing on their hands, sometimes standing on someone else's hand in a handstand. Um, just a, amazing combination of physical feats that way. And then finding a way to tie that all into this storyboard. And um, that's, that's been a fun challenge. Um, working with Bianca Sapetto, who is the choreographer, um, we did a lot of work by Skype through the summer where we would talk through the show, talk about is this a moment for the Cirque performers or for the Eisenhower dancers, or is this a moment for the um, soloist to have more focus? And so we tried to find that kind of balance in the staging. And it's just been wonderful working with her as a collaborator. The other thing I should mention, as far as the elements in Carmina Burana, um, this incredible setting. Uh, Monica Essen has done both the scenery and the costumes. And we talked about having this crazy fun house or circus world. Sometimes we call it clown purgatory, too, because of the way that it's developed from the death of Toby into this other strange place that may only happen in an instant. Scenic elements and the lighting, the lighting by Kendall Smith. Um, Kendall and uh, Monica and I spent a lot of time talking about how this would develop into um, the kind of spectacle that would um, be a real stretch. David DiChiara calls it a happening. So, you know, if, if that throwback to what a happening was in the 60s or the 70s, it does have that kind of element where um, there are all kinds of strong visual moments that help reinforce what's happening with the performers. I had originally done a double bill of Carmina Burana and Di Pagliacci and um, had connected the themes from the first opera into the Carmina because Carmina has no real uh, plot, no storyboard of its own. But to do it with another work, it seemed like an interesting possibility to connect the two in some way. So it worked with the Pagliacci. And here, David DiChiara wanted to try a different opera because it's the 100th anniversary of uh, the birth of uh, Giancarlo Minotti, who had written the medium. So he proposed that we try to link the medium with Carmina. And I was a little doubtful at first because I had such strong uh, visions of how it worked with the Pagliacci. But I'm glad that he talked me into it because I think it is a really nice kind of a juxtaposition of the, the realism of the medium that goes into this wild stylization then, this fantasy world, this fun house for Carmina Burana. And I think the two work well together that way. It's easy to shortchange the medium because so much focus goes to the, all the magic in Carmina. But I think what people will be surprised at is how incredible the medium is you know it's a it's a real shocker it's um, kind of like a, a gothic romance um, Victorian era kind of like Jack the Ripper you know it's got an, a real eerie mystical quality about it and um, its style is quite different from the Carmina it's really more realistic in terms of um, the, the way that the libretto is developed from one moment to the other it doesn't have the kind of flights of fancy that the Carmina has. So the two together form a really nice juxtaposition of those two styles. But uh, not, to, um, not to forget about the medium because it's really a strong piece by itself.